Hey everybody, Seth with Jensen USA, and today I'm going to give you a guide on choosing the correct bike helmet. A helmet is going to be the most crucial piece of protective gear that you will purchase. When riding a bike, you want to protect your brain from impacts because if your brain doesn't function after an impact, you're not going to be able to get back on that bike and keep riding. So you want to make sure that you choose the right helmet for your riding style with the right materials to protect your brain properly. There are a ton of options from road to DH and everything in between. There's different constructions, different materials for safety, and a ton of color options and style options to choose from as well. So today we're going to start by looking at the construction of helmets and then move into the different styles, looking at the features and benefits of each. So let's start at this construction. At the core of all helmets is going to be the foam liner. This has been made out of foam for the majority of helmets careers, although there are some new materials on the horizon that are being looked at for their benefits. Now what foam does in this case is it crushes under an impact and that allows the impact forces to be reduced from the impact with the road to your helmet, then to the, sh the foam core, and then to your brain. This is really important because that slowing down of forces allows your brain to impact less inside your head and cause less damage. So we want that foam to deform and actually have kind of single use impacts. Um, there are some materials that are coming out that allow for multiple impacts, but most helmets these days are single use. That means if you have a big crash and you've hit your helmet hard, it's time for you to buy a new helmet. Even if you can't see the impact, you can often cause damage to the helmet. If you can see the impact, absolutely 100% replace that helmet. Now the next piece in construction is going to be the shell. And this is usually made out of something like polycarbonate or carbon fiber. And it provides a hard surface that is hard to penetrate and actually provides a little bit of sliding effect when you impact. Now both of these things are important because you don't want things like tree branches or rocks being able to push through the foam. So the hard part is really crucial. And then the sliding factor is also crucial because if you're impacting in motion, it allows your helmet to move along without pulling your head in weird directions and causing either damage to your neck and possibly rotational damage in your brain. Now the next pieces are going to be uh, the retention system. And most helmets have some sort of dial or ratchet retention system. And this basically wraps around your head and engages your head with the helmet. And you can spin your ratchet or adjust your uh, dials in order to make that snugger or looser. And so you can actually do this on the fly with most helmets. The next piece is going to be the straps. And this works similarly to what we saw with the retention system. It's going to fall underneath your chin here and around your ears. And that again helps to hold your helmet in place both while riding and in the event of a crash. Now all these helmets have that basic construction, but beyond that, they have specific features and benefits to each. So we're gonna look at these based on riding discipline. So whether you're a road rider or a DH person, you're gonna have a helmet that looks quite a bit different as you can see. So let's start on the road side. We have this helmet from Oakley here and you can see it's a fairly small helmet with a kind of aerodynamic shape and really large vents for allowing tons of airflow through, as well as allowing the air to actually flow out the back, which takes cool air in the front, grabs the sweat and moisture off your head here, and vents out the hot air and moisture off the back. That helps to keep you really cool. The aerodynamic shape allows you to keep pedaling efficiently and not have a lot of aerodynamic drag that slows you down. And then these, this is made out of super lightweight materials in order to make it really comfortable and you almost don't notice that a helmet like that, like this is on your head. Now you'll notice it doesn't have much coverage in the back here. There's not much coverage on the ears here. Uh, and this is where a road helmet gener generally will sacrifice some of the protective capabilities of its bigger mountain brethren here. And so in the road case, you generally don't see as gnarly of riding. So a lightweight, breathable, aerodynamic helmet is more important than one that provides tons of protective coverage. 
That brings us into the XC category. If you're a cross country rider, you're gonna need a little bit more protection just due to the, the rowdiness of the terrain. So you can see we drop down here, provide a little more protection around the ears and a little more protection uh, to the back of the head. But this is still a super lightweight helmet with tons of breathability through these vents. Uh, and this one actually has a cool feature of adding on a removable uh, visor here to keep the sun out of your eyes. This actually makes a great uh, commuter helmet as well. But a cross country helmet's gonna have a ton of the same lightweight, somewhat aerodynamic uh, features of this helmet in road, but it's gonna usually add a little more coverage to the back and have just a slight weight penalty over its road, road brethren there. Now we get into a trail helmet. This one's gonna gain a little bit weight, a little bit of weight again from the ones we've seen before. And this is because it's looking to provide even more protection. So the materials are a little bit heavier duty. They're, the foam's a little thicker. There's a little bit lower cast on the back here to protect a lot of the lower head here. Um, it still has a ton of vents but it's not as aerodynamically designed as what we've seen down here. And you can see that with the addition of this big visor here. And that visor is mainly for sun protection. So in the case of a trail rider, they're not really worried about aerodynamic efficiency. They're worried about protection as well as sun uh, protection for your eyes so you can see when you're riding through chunky sections. Now next up is a similar helmet to that, except this is what we'd consider an enduro helmet. And that's because it has this big chin protector here. Now there's two forms of this. There's one that has a lightweight trail style helmet like this, but with an, a, a built-in chin protector that's not removable. This specific model from Bell here has a removable one. So it's got a couple of ratchets here uh, or buckles. And so we're gonna go ahead and release those and show you guys just how this thing pops off here. So you undo the three buckles and you can actually pop that whole chin protector off. Now you have a helmet that looks an awful lot like your trail helmet. Now, why does this matter? Well, for enduro riders, it's all about riding down. That's where you get time during races. So you want a lot of protection. You wanna be able to charge as hard as possible. So you put that chin protection on and it allows you to make sure you're protecting your face in, in the event of a big crash. But then when you go to ride back up the hill to get to the next start gate, you can ride nice and cool with a big open helmet, tons of venting, nice and light, that isn't blocking the wind from coming in and you know hitting your face and cooling you down. You can just kind of pack your chin protection onto your gear bag on your back. And then when you're ready to do it, you grab it off put it back on and charge down the hill. Now I will put a caveat here. These are not generally DH rated helmets. That means that if you're charging full gravity parks, you're gonna wanna step to our big boy here. So this helmet from TLD is one of their top of the line ones. It's got a carbon fiber shell in order to keep weight down and it just has massive amounts of protection. So you can actually see it's got this big area here with removable pads that both provide comfort and protection in the event of a crash. It's got uh, all kinds of cool material in here to try to provide some venting but venting is one of the uh, lesser scenarios that this thing's worried about. It is all about impact protection. So there are cooling vents here, but they do a lot less than what you've seen from these other helmets. Now let's talk about safety in all these helmets. These helmets are all gonna provide the same level of safety at a base level, which is a standard within the US called CPSC 1203. That is a standard that all helmets have to meet. Now beyond that, they all provide different levels of coverage, dual density foams or different types of foam materials. And one that's kind of a big up and coming safety feature is slip, pl slip plane technology. The most common one is MIPS, which you can see in this helmet here. It's basically a small sheet that allows rotation of the helmet uh, independent of your head. We also have another technology here. You can see these little disc inside. Uh, this is called 360 Turbine, and this is a proprietary one to Liat. There's a couple others out there, but they all do a similar thing. And the idea is to separate the forces from your brain one more time. 
So in the event of a crash, it's real easy to think that you may just impact directly into the road and that's it. But in reality, what happens is you impact and slide or you impact and rotate. And so you have oblique angles that actually transfer forces to your brain. So what these slip plane uh, technologies allow to happen is that helmet to actually shift just a little bit. It's not a whole lot, but it's just to reduce that rotational force to your brain. And they are finding studies that are showing that this is definitely adding an additional uh, factor of protection to your brain. So let's talk about fit now. This helmet is kind of one of my favorite go-to ones. I generally do kind of a trail, all mountain style of riding. So I want low coverage. I love the big visor. I think it looks really good. So this is actually one that I've been uh, adding to my collection recently. So let's see how this thing fits. So first of all, you're gonna wanna open up your straps and get it nice and ready. Make sure everything's nice and flat. And then go ahead and open your retention system all the way. So in this case, it's a dial one. It could be a ratchet as well. So once you have that done, go ahead and throw this on your head and we're gonna just kind of make sure it sits down. Now, you'll notice right now, this one kind of uh, wobbles just a little bit here because I haven't dialed anything in. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna reach back and I'm gonna just adjust my retention system here and get it snug, but not overly snug. I don't wanna cause hot spots on my head. I wanna make sure it's nice and comfortable. Now, from there, you wanna do just a quick wiggle test. You can shake your head forward, back, and just make sure that it's not going anywhere. That'll indicate to you that you have it dialed in just right. Now, if you dial it in all the way and it doesn't fit or it's too wobbly, that means you have too big of a helmet and you need to size down. So the next piece is going to be putting your strap on. Now this you want just loose enough that you can kind of slide a finger or two in there and not feel like you're having to force it in. There's a couple of quick tests that I like to do to make sure that it's snug enough, but not too snug. And that's a couple of just head bobs where I go back and then forward. And I just want to feel just a little push on the bottom of my neck here. Now you want to make sure that this comes nicely around your ears and isn't, uh, isn't over your ear or too far in front or behind. And then that this chin strap comes nice and low kind of to the crook of your neck here. So once you have that dialed in, you're doing pretty good, but we're gonna do a few last tests just to make sure that we're good. So I'm gonna do a couple of pushes on the side of it, make sure it's not shifting really far. I'm gonna reach my fingers into the side. I wanna be able to put just enough of a finger in there but not be able to like shove my whole hand in. That indicates a helmet that's too big or the wrong shape for your head. And then I'm also gonna check that I don't have any hot spots front to back or any extra wiggle. I don't want any hot spots on my temple where it's squeezing too hard. So if this, if this helmet feels comfortable, you don't have any hot spots, it's not wiggling around, you're good to go. So that's a good way to do that, but let's do one last test. We wanna really shake it give it a good rattle. You're gonna look ridiculous doing it, but you wanna make sure that your helmet's gonna stay in place when you crash. Now, all of these helmets are available at JensenUSA.com where we have free shipping on all orders over $50. If you have any questions about these helmets or any other helmets on our website, reach out to our expert gear advisors and they will get you dialed with the right gear. Thanks for watching today and remember, keep pedaling.